हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड ए प्रॉब्लम ऑन रूट लोकस हियर वी नीड टू ड्रा रूट लोकस डायग्राम फॉर द सिस्टम विद ट्रांसफर फंक्शन k डिवाइडेड बाय s इनटू s प्लस वन इनटू s प्लस थ्री सो फॉर दिस ट्रांसफर फंक्शन वी नीड टू फाइंड द रूट लोकस डायग्राम The first step is to find root locus starting point and end point. The root locus starting point can be determined by open loop pole and end point can be determined by open loop zeros. So if we take this transfer function, we can see it is having three poles. So pole will be equal to three. So the number of poles are three. So we can write P1. Pole one is at s is equal to zero. Pole two is at s is equal to minus one, and pole three at s is equal to minus three. And if you observe here in the numerator, we don't have any s term, which means number of zeros will be equal to zero. That's why the end point of the root locus will be at infinity. Now let us find number of root locus. We know number of root locus will be equal to number of poles if poles are greater than zero. Number of root locus will be equal to number of zeros if zeros are greater than poles. So in this case, number of poles are greater than number of zeros. So that's why number of root locus will be equal to number of poles. So the number of root locus will be equal to three. If we consider an S plane with real and imaginary axes, so the first pole will be at s is equal to zero, second pole will be at s is equal to minus one, and the third pole will be at s is equal to minus three. Now let us see root locus on real axes. We know. A point on root locus will be part of root locus if number of poles and number of zeros towards right side of the point is odd. If we consider this pole, this is the starting point of the root locus. So, if we consider this point towards right side, we are having one pole which is odd number. That's why between minus one and zero there will be root locus and If we consider this point, which is minus three towards right side, we are having two poles, which is even number of poles. That's why there will be no root locus between minus three and minus one. And since the root locus ends at infinity, if we consider that point at infinity, from infinity towards right side, we are having three poles. That's why from infinity up to minus three, we will be having the root locus. So you just need to count the number of poles and zeros towards right side. So this is the starting point, and if you take this point from this point towards right side, we are having one pole which is odd number. So between minus one and zero, we will be having the root locus. If you consider this point towards right side, we are having two poles. That's why in between minus three and minus one, there will be no root locus. And since the end point is at infinity, from that point. Towards right side, we are having three poles. So from infinity up to minus three, we'll be having the root locus. So we can say root locus exists from zero to minus one and to left of minus three. Now we need to find number of asymptotes. Number of asymptotes will be equal to poles minus zeros. So we know pole is three and number of zeros are zero. So number of asymptotes will be equal to three. Now we need to find center of asymptotes. Center of asymptotes can be given as sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by number of poles minus number of zeros. So sum of poles, if we add all these poles, we will get minus four minus sum of zeros. It is zero divided by number of poles are three minus number of zeros are zero. So center of asymptote will be. At minus one point three three. So if we consider this S plane, center of asymptote will be at minus one point three three. Now let us find angle of asymptotes. 
angle of asymptotes can be given as 2k plus 1 divided by poles minus 0 into 180 degree. Here k will be equal to 0, 1 and so on up to p minus z minus 1. So, in this case, we are having poles as 3, zeros as 0 and if we subtract 1 from this value, it will be 2. So, k value will be from 0, 1 and 2. So, these are the values which we need to take for k. Now, let us find angle of asymptote at k is equal to 0. So, we can write that as 2 into 0 plus 1 divided by poles are 3 minus 0 into 180 degree. So, it will be equal to 60 degree. So, angle of asymptote at k is equal to 1 will be 2 into 1 plus 1 divided by 3 into 180 degree. So, it will be equal to 180 degree. And angle of asymptote at k is equal to 2 will be equal to 2 into 2 plus 1 divided by 3 into 180 degree. So, this will be equal to 300 degree. So, from center of uh, asymptote, so this is the center of asymptote and these are the angle of asymptotes. So, we will get 3 asymptotes. So, at 60 degree we are having 1 asymptote, at 180 degree we will be having 1 asymptote and at 300 degree we will be having another asymptote. So, these are the 3 asymptotes that are available. Next, we will find breakaway point. We can find breakaway point by taking dk by ds and equating that value to 0. We can differentiate k with respect to s and taking that value as 0. So, uh, to get the value of k, let us take the characteristics equation. Let us write 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0. So, 1 plus g of s into h of s is given problem where it is k divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 3. Okay, So, this term will be equal to 0. So, from this we can find the characteristics equation. right? So, we can find the characteristics equation. If we take the LCM and if we find the characteristics equation for this, we will get s into s plus 1 into s plus 3 plus k will be equal to 0. So, from this we can find the value of k, right. So, first let us multiply these terms. So, if we multiply these terms, we will get s cube plus 4s square plus 3s plus k will be equal to 0. So, we can write k is equal to minus s cube minus 4s square minus 3s, okay. So, let us take this as equation number 1. Let us call this as equation 1. So, we got the value of k. We need to differentiate k with respect to s. So, we can write dk by ds will be equal to differentiate this equation. It will be minus 3s square minus 8s minus 3 will be equal to 0. Okay. So, this term we have made 0 due to this condition. So, all the negative sign we can write the positive sign. So, we can write this as 3s square plus 8s plus 3 is equal to 0. If we simplify this equation, we will get the root as s is equal to minus 0 0.41 and s is equal to minus 2.28. If we observe this, we are not having root locus at minus 2.28 we are having the root locus at minus 0 0.41, right. So, at minus 2.28, we are not having the root locus. That is why S is equal to minus 0 0.41 is the actual breakaway point, okay. So, this is the actual breakaway point, okay. So, if you take the S plane, so breakaway point will be, this will be the breakaway point at minus 0 0.41, okay. So, this is the breakaway point. Now, let us see the intersection of root locus branches with imaginary axis, okay. So, to identify the intersection of root locus branches with imaginary axis, we need to consider the characteristics equation. So, let us consider this equation, we can write s cube plus 4s square 
plus 3s plus k will be equal to 0. For this characteristics equation, let us perform Routh's test. Okay, so let us write the highest power of s first, s cube, then s square, then s to the power of 1, then s to the power of 0. So let us write the value as 1, then 3, then 4, then we can write k. So value at this point will be 4 into 3, it is 12, minus 1 into k, it is k, divided by 4. So next value, it will be 0 here. Okay. So here the value will be k. Now from the last row, we can write k value is greater than 0. So from the last row, we have written k value should be greater than 0. Right. So the row before that, so this term we can take, we can take 12 minus k divided by 4 should be equal to 0. So from this, we can say k value is equal to 12. Okay. So k value is 12 here. So if we substitute k here as 12, so this row will become 0. So the row before to this will get the auxiliary equation. So we can write the equation as 4s square plus k will be equal to 0. If you substitute the value of k here as 12, so it will be 4s square plus 12 is equal to 0. So from this, we can get the value of s as plus r minus j 1.732. So this is the intersection of root locus branches in the imaginary axis. So the root locus branches will intersect the imaginary axis at plus j 1.732 and at minus j 1.732. Now let us draw the root locus in the graph sheet. First we need to write the poles at 0, minus 1 and minus 3. This is pole 1 at 0. This is pole 2 and this is pole 3. We know root locus exists from 0 to minus 1 and left of minus 3. Root locus exists between 0 to minus 1 and left of minus 3. So root locus exists between 0 to minus 1 and here from minus 3 up to infinity. Now center of asymptote is at minus 1.33. So center of asymptote is somewhere around minus 1.33, right? So this is center of asymptotes. So which is at minus 1.33. From this center of asymptote, we need to draw angle of asymptotes at 60 degree, 180 degree and 300 degree. So we need to draw at 60 degree at 180 degree and at 300 degree. So this is one asymptote. This is one asymptote. And this is the another asymptote. This is at 60 degree. This is at 180 degree. And here at 300 degree. Next, the breakaway point is at minus 0 0.41 intersection of root locus will be at s is equal to plus or minus j 1.732 so somewhere here this is the breakaway point at s is equal to 0 0.451 so it is minus 0 0.451 so here it will be s is equal to minus j 1.732 and here it will be s is equal to plus j 1.732. So from breakaway point, 
so we need to draw this up to infinity like this so these are the root locus branches this will go up to infinity so this is for k is equal to infinity now to comment on the stability of the system so from this root locus we understood that when k value is less than 12 all the poles are towards left hand side of the s plane that's why the system is stable when k is equal to 12 when k value is equal to 12 the root locus branches are exactly on the imaginary axis that's why system is marginally stable and if k value is greater than 12 and less than infinity right so as k value is greater than 1 and less than infinity you can see the root locus branches is towards right side of the s plane so the system is unstable so this is about the problem on root locus hope you have understood the topic thank you